So, what if you can't drive due to a disability and walking is not necessarily the best option due to distance or danger or a combination of both? Even, you know, walking to a bus stop in some circumstances. Now, obviously, this depends on the area. But in some areas, they have what is known as ADA paratransit service. And a lot of areas work it like this. You call up a couple days in advance. They send out one of these little mini buses to come get you. And, you'll, and they'll know where you're going, and you have to pay them a couple bucks per ride. So one, two, and a couple bucks to and a couple bucks from. The catch is you have these time windows to contend with. If you have to cancel on the day of an appointment, you may get assigned points. You get enough points, you may get suspended. Again, it depends on the area. And my particular service has a same-day medical, but from what I've heard, that's sort of a 50-50 up in the air. And if you have to go to a doctor's appointment, for example, and you're in there uh, longer than your... your um, ride home, your ride home shows up, you still haven't seen the doctor, well, you can initiate what they call a will call. The trouble is you do that, and what's going to happen is you could be waiting several hours for another bus to show up. So you got all these catch-22s. What if you could eliminate those catch-22s and still maintain your complete independence for travel? This is known as a personal rapid transit, or PRT, pod of sorts, if you will. Um, as you can see, they run along these little guideways, and they're really quite something. They're an on-demand, um, excuse me, an on-demand automated transit system that's actually, believe it or not, in full production. Let's take a look here. These are actual um, in-service Heathrow pods, which are based on the personal rapid transit system that I just described. Now, how does this work? Well, if you Google, if you search for here on YouTube for Heathrow pod, you can see what it's, a lot, what it's like. But here's the drill. Imagine this. All you do is you tap a button and your vehicle arrives for you in 10 seconds. Seriously, you just hit a button, and if the vehicle's not there, one comes for you, and you could be there from anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds, okay? And it already knows where you're going. You just hit the button. When you're ready, there's no automatic, you know, there's no business of, if you're not on there in time, the door's going to close and the system will leave without you. Oh, no. What's going to happen is, it will sit there and wait for you, not the other way around. You won't wait for it. It'll wait for you. So if the pod's not there, you just hit a button and it'll come to you within 10 to 30 seconds. But more often than not, the pod will already be there and just wait for a passenger. It just sits there and waits, charges in its, in its little station, and it'll just wait for you. This is really, really great. It's an on-demand system. And keep in mind that a deployment for a large city would be very, very taxing financially, on your infrastructure, all sorts of other variables. But you often wonder what, you know, the day might come, you know, never say never. Um, here's another example of the Heathrow pod system on their own dedicated little guideways. Again, you just hit the button, they come for you, and it's on your time. You don't have to call in advance or anything. You don't have to tell them, you know, like, you have to tell the system where you're going, but you don't have to do a one to three days in advance. There's no time window. There's no 25, 30 minute time window with these things. They will come to you, and they will wait for you. You will not wait for it. Now, in terms of a wide-scale deployment, the best example I can give you is this um, uh, PRT system, which uses laser-guided, um, a laser-guided guideway. There's no physical 
um, there's no physical barrier on either side like there was in that last photo. Instead, what happens is it'll run along these invisible tracks, as, as it were, guided by a lasers, uh, lasers on the front bumper or underneath or wherever they are. I don't, I don't know. But it's the same concept. You, you hit a button, and it's already sitting there waiting for you, or it'll come to you within less than a minute. And it waits for you. There's no time window. With paratransit, if you're not on there within, if you're not out to the door and onto your bus, you know, if, if, if they at least don't see you within five minutes, they'll drive off without you. Uh-uh, not with these. They will sit there, and they will wait for you. Um, and the best wide-scale deployment, as I, can, as I started to say, that is in Mazdar City in Abu Dhabi. This is truly remarkable. If you Google Mazdar City, take a look around. This city has absolutely no cars. Everybody uses a bike or other alternative form of transport. And around their university, everybody uses these little car pods to get around. It's really, really cool. Um... And you're wondering about, I was talking about using these in a paratransit application. Well, let's take a look here. Again, the, the vehicle waits for you, and you can take your time. It'll just sit there and wait and charge. And you can see here by this diagram, for those of you who cannot see, I'll explain to you. We have 38 inches wide, 38-inch uh, wide doors, 114 inches from one end of the cabin to the other, and the total vehicle length is 142 inches. So that's more than enough. You can There's a diagram in here. you got four seated people, and I would say at least one, maybe two wheelchairs in a pinch. But the fact that, that, um, that it's literally an on-demand system. You go, again, I, like I said, you can Google... Um, you can Google Heathrow Pod, and it will show you the system in action. But as far as having it on a wide-scale deployment for a paratransit service, um, do you think it would work? Because I would love to see, because I'll never be able to drive. I'll never be able to drive, and having to depend upon others. I mean, I personally have paratransit, but those uh, shortcomings that I just described to you are things that I have to deal with. Whereas people who are fully sighted and can drive can just go off, you know, wherever, whenever they please. Even with the regular bus system, you know, it's our system is not necessarily the best. Um, in fact, just to get to my university, which would be like 15 minutes by car or 30 minutes by paratransit, would take a couple hours and a couple buses on the regular route um, and a lot of walking. So, you know, which would you rather have? Would you have that or would you have rather have a system where you just hit a button Give them your destination, and within, say, a couple minutes, they send out a pod, and it's on the same day. No, no pre, pre um, reservations. No nothing, nothing like that. I personally think that this could be big if enough interest were generated um, for for a, for a paratransit deployment. But what do you guys think? All we would need on the inside, incidentally, are the, the Heathrow pod, you, again, um, take a look at that, and you'll see that there are autom audible, um, audible cues in, 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 the, um, in, in, in the car, and it'll say, ready to go, press start. What would be nice is to do is say, ready to go, press start. The start button is located to your left at about waist level or whatever. Give, if they give the proper audible cues and tactile representation, this could be a fully independent transit system. But what do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.